Hello guys, I am Sean the Bro, and we are here today for the next part of the Top Down Shooter tutorial. So I know I just did one yesterday and tried to split them up, but uh, I don't know. I wanted to get this out of the way because this is probably the only one I had for you right now um, for a while. I have the enemies one to do as well, but I was going to maybe put that in with some more of the Super Smash Bros and kind of make it just an overall AI one. Um, I was going to try to do some PS4 gameplay, stuff like that, but uh, it's been really rough and I have a really bad headache and uh, I'm not at liberty to say anything that has happened, but everything is okay now as I said and it's just, it was a lot. So um, my apologies for this, but uh, let, let's go into the, uh, the Sean sprite here now. So I'm doing this with uh, my friend Stevie as you guys know from what I've said and uh... so um... I'm gonna just show you this I would try to explain it but I'm going to explain it actually in a later video so uh... I, I just want to show you a whole bunch of the code so you're gonna wanna have your character with the sprite selected and everything along those lines and um you're going to want to make a create event and make it can shoot is equal to zero um, at the you know at the start of course and um, this is because it will uh, you guys, I'm not going to go too deep into it but this is because uh, you're going to want to be able to shoot all the time from the start unless of course at the start of the round you want to uh, once the objects created you want to uh, make him be out of ammo for something relating to the story or for some reason so I'm not gonna go over all of them but that's what can shoot is you're gonna see that a lot that's why I want to mention that I'm also going to mention uh, what the plus string is that you're going to see several times just copy this code I'll leave it up here there's gonna be a whole bunch of different codes for you guys to copy I'm not gonna go too in depth because as I said I'm gonna do them later right now I just want to show you how to do it if you have this code if you have all the codes I show you it will make sure that you will be able to make the game work really well well I shouldn't say really well it's not perfect yet um, but it's it'll, it'll be pretty good and um, so what else uh, yeah all of this code so th the string the string the string combines two things um, for example you'll see it later but uh, I'll tell you now because string is one of the most important things to use when making a game that I've seen so I'll tell you what a string does I can't give you a code besides the one that you see because it could be a string for a whole bunch of different things um, but Uh, well, I don't know. I'm trying to think of a good example, but um, you could use the, the string I'm going to do is going to make text appear, and then it's going to make it also go to a certain place, so it's not just in the middle. Um, that's a string because it's doing two things. So that when you see string, that's what that does. So you can you can change any of the variables you see when string is involved. You can also change all of the health and uh, ammo and we're gonna get to one of the most important objects in the game very soon but this is a long code I'll keep this up here for a little bit um, you might have to pause it because I'm I don't want to keep it up here too long but I know you need to see so yep So just get all that down. It's going to be in high quality. I don't know if it's going to be hard for you to see, but uh, maybe switch that quality now. Okay, so here. Here's the wall object, that's nothing. You wanna have that there so you can use in other things but you don't need too much of it. 
So uh, just make it so that if bullets or enemy projectiles hit it, they disappear. Okay, so um, I pre-recorded this, of course, but uh, gonna wait for it to get into it. So the control event is the most important one, one of one of. Like you couldn't have a game without a character or something like that. I, I guess you could actually. There are games that don't have characters, but you get my point. Um, it's one of the most important aspects because it controls so much of the game. You can put lots of things in here. You, you make it have no sprite so that it does whatever. For example, on the first thing I got here, it changes the color of the, the mouse. I'm sorry, the, uh, the sprite of the mouse. To an X. And uh, the X makes it so it looks like you're aiming. You don't have to do that. I'm just saying, in general, that's something you can do. And um, you can also add lots of code, which is where you're going to see the strings and the text. And some of the dialogue boxes are going to be involved here. Um, I will tell you about those later in another episode for RPG games. But I think it's good that you know at least what this is. Okay. Um, obviously, I thought I had a lot more to say at this part. <laughs> um, no, but really, I'm just not talking that much because I'm just waiting to show you. And also because I want to explain it all in a later video. Again, I had a lot going on, so I don't really feel like talking right now. But I wanted to get this out for you guys. I promise there will be more gameplay up soon. But, uh, so yeah, get all this down. This is important. Even if you change the variables or had different names, just understand what this is. Then you can replace all that stuff later. Um, it's really not, once you get used to it, like once, the, once you understand what these means, it becomes a lot easier. So, um, do all that. And um, here we go. Destroy, destroy, destroy. This is uh, the control variable for shift. And um, it's for the dialog boxes. Shift is the button that goes on to the next one. Enter closes it out completely. But shift will always bring you to the next one. And um, again, I'm going to get into that later in a whole different episode for RPGs in specific but uh again just get all this code no matter what just understand it learn it it'll help you out a lot I promise Okay, so hopefully you get all that down, and then we're gonna be go we're gonna be pretty good with that. Uh, the next thing, besides the code itself, and besides ex me explaining to you that I'll tell you about it in a different episode, I just also wanted to mention that when you're creating your game with your objects, make sure that you don't ever hit the wrong thing um, along the lines of destroy instance because if you write anything and destroy the wrong instance it will not fix itself I don't know if it's an error or what but it takes it never seems to fix itself 
um, I don't know if it was just mine or not. I, never, I couldn't find any errors on it, but I specifically did it on a on a new game I made in like 10 minutes just as a test, and it worked the same way. I don't know what it is, but it's like if you ever set that as a variable, it will screw you <laughs> forever. I don't know if that's just me or what, but I, I have to tell you that. Since I couldn't find it anywhere else, I want to say don't ever set the wrong variable to be destroyed and then delete that variable. Don't do not do that. If you do that, it's not gonna be fun. I hope someone who's more skilled than I can figure out a fix for that if they do it because it's so bad, so annoying. Um, it doesn't really tie into anything we've done, but I wanted to add that in there before I forgot. And uh, yeah, sorry guys about today. I'm not in the mood to talk. I'll, I might tell you the situation later. I can't. I'm not at liberty to say a lot of it, but uh, I, I can probably mention at least what happened. Um, but yeah, I'm sorry guys. I I hope you still enjoyed this video. I hope you learned from it, and I hope it helps you create your game. I'm just... I, I need to <laughs> go to sleep. Um, but uh, thank you guys for watching this video. If you enjoyed, please rate, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye, buddies.